Welcome back. Well, yesterday I showed you a bunch of ads, and I thought I would show you today how I gather these ads, determine what are good resources and what are not. Um, Sometimes it's not always as easy as it looks. And we're going to talk about that when we come back. So what I did for the purposes of this demonstration is I went into Google Images with a very simple request, 1930s flooring ads. It's very specific, but still, it's manageable. So we're going to take a look at the ads I got why I would choose one and not another, and what I do with them once I've got them. So we're starting off with a great ad from Goodyear. This is a rubberized floor. So here we have the whole ad, and now I'm going to shift over. And what I would do with the ad, first of all, is I would probably cut out the text. Now, sometimes I will leave the text in if I think it's important and illustrative of what we're looking at. But in this case, no, Goodyear rubberized floor, oh my, uh, we don't need to know any more about that. So, now if I were actually going to do this, to show it to you in a video, I would do a better job of cropping. But in this case, of course, this is intentional. I want you to see um, the cropping. And this is an interesting ad because, of course, it is a rubberized flooring ad. But an ad like this, um, boy, this is useful for a lot of different purposes. First of all, it's a very high-end bedroom from the 1930s. It's also a very coordinated bedroom. Notice the curtains match the skirt around the vanity, match the bedspreads, match the little throw rugs. We've got other things going on here. As I said, it's a high-end bedroom, and we can tell from the fact that, for starters, we've got a bathroom off the bedroom, and this is the 1930s, so wow. Uh, we've also got a nicely paneled wall in the European style, which was, in fact, the mark of high-end elegance. But we've also got a few other things. The furniture is of an older style. We have a Georgian pier glass over the vanity, and that alone tells us that this is a room that's looking at an older style more staid, more traditional. Notice very little art on the walls. The art that you see is very symmetrical, very structured, very, very, boy, I got out my level and my tape measure to put this up, but it's very tiny. The art is not a major feature in this room. Now, obviously, the major feature in this room is going to be the floor, but they're also going to reflect contemporary decorating styles. For example, note the twin beds. That was simply a thing in the more elegant bedrooms. Also, of course, a flooring ad. They want it to be family friendly, and you don't want mom and dad sleeping in the same bed because this is the 1930s, oh my. But it's actually a really good image for a lot of other purposes. So this particular ad would be great. Here is another one. Uh, again, a great ad 
came up on that same flooring search. All of these ads came up on that flooring search. But in this case, we have 1930s French Art Deco. So a piece like this coming up on that flooring search, oh my, we've got French, we've got Art Deco, we've got bedroom, we have built-in bed because the bed seems to be built into the wall as part of these two matched wardrobes on either side. Very different. Absolutely not very American. But the fact that it's Art Deco and it's French instead of American is going to mean that it will be a more pure example of the Art Deco style. Because we've talked about this before. When Art Deco came into the United States, we turned it into Streamline Modern. American Art Deco is very, very American. And real Art Deco was born in Paris. So real Art Deco is French. Again, a wonderfully useful image came up on flooring. This is another great image. I have no idea what this has to do with flooring, to be honest with you, but it's it's got, it has the most wonderful Art Deco look to it. I especially love that vanity in the background, right in the middle of the picture. And notice we've got a fluorescent light bulb, a naked, unshaded fluorescent light bulb over the bed. What were they thinking? But we have night tables built right into the headboard. The bed itself is like a sleigh bed design, which is a much older style. But everything else here is just too deco for words. Great image uh, that, that comes up on that search. Not necessarily for flooring, mind you, but for a whole lot of other purposes. This is another wonderful Art Deco image that just came up on that search. And in terms of flooring, I can't even begin to imagine because this has got to be one of the most dull floors I've ever seen. We've got this wonderful round room. We've got this great Deco furniture. We have these jazz era colors of this deep burgundy and gold, very popular in the 30s wonderful image. What it has to do with flooring, I have no idea. This was another odd little image to come up on a flooring search. This is a style I recognize because I've drawn up a lot of images in this particular style. And I assume this is, uh, well, I know it's an ad, but I assume this is an ad probably for something other than flooring. Might even be that wall treatment. The interesting aspects of this little image is just the colors. The colors and, and the combination of this green, brown, and then I'm not sure what I would call that color on the walls. Sort of a light mottled terracotta. It has its uses. It's not the sort of image I would find particularly useful, but someone else might. This one, well, obviously this is just super art deco. It is not a flooring ad. I don't know why it would have come up on a flooring ad. This has come up from Alamy, which is uh, a photo service. On the other hand, this is a fantastic Art Deco image that simply fell into my lap. It's like, oh, how lucky do you get? But I mean, if you ignore the fact that I told the search engine to find me flooring, that is a fantastic Art Deco dining room. That is like Art Deco fantasy dining room. So it's a great image. Again, what it had to do with flooring, I can only guess. Another one. 
Now, I can see why this might have come up with, uh, with flooring because we do have this marble checkerboard, at least I think it's marble. We have a marble-like checkerboard. We also have a fantastic Greek key frieze up at the top near the ceiling. We have a wonderful ceiling. We have some fantastic furniture. So we got a great Art Deco image. If I were going to file this away, I would probably file it in two categories, Art Deco ceiling and Art Deco furniture, because I, I love the furniture. It's extremely Deco. It's also extremely classically inspired. We have, boy, we, this is one of those take your pick in terms of the images. When I say classically inspired, the images on this on the back of this sofa are Greek, they are Roman, they are Egyptian. Take your pick. It's like they just grabbed them all and threw them all in together. I have no idea what they were thinking. But you have to admit, it's, it's an amazing room. Now this one, I understand. 1930s flooring ads. This is for a hardwood flooring. It's very interesting. It's very typical of a 1930s room. The strange way they decorated with the sofa off in the corner um, with heaven only knows what. We've got a chair, we've got a radiator, and we've got an end table in front of the window. And in effect, they are blocking the utility of that window that's what they did, as we saw yesterday in those ads when we were looking at room design from the 1920s. This is what they did. This is normal to them. We have zero art on the walls. None. And the color combination of, what is this? This is a, a red and white design on the curtains, black and white on the sofa, green on the lampshades, brown and gold in the carpet, and then gold on the walls. Oh, plus we have a little blue scatter rug in front of the sofa. I don't know about that. Yes, they did love their color, but boy, this is a bit much. Now this, this is actually a very small picture. And I come up with these from time to time. And sometimes, as in the case of this picture, this tiny image can actually be used. If I wanted to use this to illustrate colors or to illustrate their strange method of shoving chairs in odd spots, this chair is really in the corner. We've got a table in front of the window. It's it's very alien compared to the way we arrange furniture today. But this, in fact, would be a useful photo. Uh, it, it is just barely large enough to be useful. Any smaller, and I would have to delete it. This one, of course, is not useful at all. And that's too bad because we have a nice picture of a 1930s room, and it is, in fact, that flooring ad I was looking for. But for my purposes, because that photograph is is so um, distorted because of the angle, there's no way I could use this. So when I come across images like this, I just have to pass. Now this also, is a relatively small image from the ad. Again, flooring ad. Obviously, there is some utility in this. The photo is large enough uh, for us to take a look and make some judgments about the room, learn a little from it. We've got some wonderfully strange things here. Once again, we have a chair tucked off in a corner. Um, notice the two little chairs 
at the foot of the bed. Those chairs are completely out of scale with the rest of the items in the bedroom. I have no idea what the artist was thinking when they came up with this image, but for some reason, I guess they decided to put doll chairs in the room. Don't get it at all. But it is useful in terms of color. And as I said, it is a flooring ad. This is from an era when they were trying to convince people to put linoleum uh, in bedrooms, living rooms. Well, actually, linoleum had been in bedrooms for a while because prior to the 1930s, bedrooms were considered almost utilitarian spaces. We had gone from a time in the 15th, 16th centuries when a bedroom was the central room in the house and you would entertain your friends there. You really would. It's creepy, but that's what they did to a bedroom being considered rather like a kitchen or a pantry. It had become almost a, a workroom in people's minds, not a room of decorating or, or luxury or comfort. And so we did have linoleum in the bedrooms, but they were, boy, they were pushing linoleum everywhere. It did not work, by the way. Uh, we did not ever hit a point where linoleum in the parlor or the dining room was a mark of elegance. And this is the time, the 1930s, when, of course, they were still pushing linoleum in the bedroom, but people had rejected it. If there was linoleum in the bedroom in the 1930s, it was probably a child's bedroom. Now this, this is great. Gay colors are servants in this happy kitchen. Oh, my goodness, you could never get away with that today. Uh, I did want you to see this because this is Armstrong. Some of my best images come from the Armstrong Company. They documented kitchens and bathrooms uh, better than anyone else did in the early part of the 20th century. Now, when I come up with an image like this, I'm going to show you because I found this image already pre-cropped elsewhere. This is the ad, and here we go. This is the image. Someone already isolated the image and posted it online. Now, of course, this is a wonderful kitchen image. Armstrong images were great because they did show real kitchens and real bathrooms in the way people were actually using them. Um, this is a fabulous little piece. Uh, 19, yeah, 1930s, I, I, I'm sorry, I was going to say 1920s. It looks like a 1920s kitchen to me. Probably is simply early 30s. Wonderful slice of the past. This is a very useful photo for a 1930s kitchen. Now, here's another one of those super tiny photos. And I wanted you to see the cropping on this because when I pulled that ad, as you can see, it was not originally photographed, um, you know, perfectly square. It was off to an angle a little. Now, obviously, I can go in and straighten that out, just manipulate the photo. This is what happens when you try to use images that are a little too small for the purpose. Now, at this point, we can see very little of the detail. We do, however, have some details that are very clear to us. The twin beds. And as I said, it's, you know, these are ads. They have to be family friendly. You can't show mom and dad sleeping in the same bed. We see the sheer curtains on the windows. This is an era when curtains on the windows were often more prevalent than draperies on the windows. We also have that Georgian pier glass over the dresser. So this is a period 
when people were still dealing with antiques. Now, Georgian pier glasses, mind you, fell out of fashion, oh my goodness, at least a hundred years before the 1930s when this image was uh, produced in the ad. So it's interesting to note that in the 1930s, they were dealing with antiques. And I might retain an image like this in my files strictly for that purpose alone. This one, a wonderful 1930s kitchen. This is great. Uh, again, flooring ad, as you can tell from the very interesting floor we've got. But there's so much more here. And this is the great thing about flooring ads. While they're taking pictures of floors, they're capturing everything else too. We have the window treatment in here. We can see the stenciling on the glass doors of the cabinets. We can see how high these cabinets are. We can also see built-in tray storage behind the cabinets. That's in the area above the sink alcove we can see that they were still determined to eat in the kitchen. And we can also see that they had portable tray tables over on the other side. There's a lot here, a lot of really interesting stuff that got captured, probably accidentally, in this flooring ad. Here's another one. Same style of ad. Again, we know it's flooring because all we have to do is look at that beautiful inlaid linoleum work, um, the mirror image of the red design on the off-white floor, the off-white design on the red floor. And we are seeing just so much fantastic stuff here. We are seeing this open dividing wall with open shelves you can put stuff in. And it's full of plants. We see the kitchen beyond. We are seeing the color combination of this burgundy maroon floor with a light sort of somewhere between sage and mint. I don't know exactly what that green color is, but we are seeing some very interesting color combinations. Great image. And we caught it all by accident just from the flooring ad. This is another flooring ad. As you can see, we have linoleum in the bedroom. They were pushing that. But in the meantime, again, accidentally, we've caught other stuff. We've caught a great window treatment. We have caught a wonderful um, color combination with the wallpaper and the stenciling on the door of that closet. And notice, the closet is an addition to the room. If you take a close look, you can see that the baseboard molding is being cut off by the closet. That's how we know it was an add-on. And so we're looking at a room from an era when closets were not necessarily standard equipment. We have this built-in set of drawers, it looks to me like two night tables flanking a full-length mirror that apparently was some sort of interesting vanity setup. There is so much going on here. And of course, we have purple, green, yellow, all in the same room. They love their colors in the 1930s. But again, all this accidental stuff captured by a flooring company. Here is another one, same style of ad. And again, we've got all this accidental stuff. We have a cabinet that's built into the knee wall uh, around the dormer in this bedroom. We have the curtains that, that we have caught here. We have, well, we have a, a drapery behind the headboard of the bed. We have a desk at the foot of the bed. This is interesting and different, and it's not the sort of thing we see every day. 
once again caught by accident by the flooring company. This, now, I have no idea why this particular image showed up. Again, not flooring and like that amazing Art Deco image we saw earlier, it seems that the real point of interest here is the ceiling. We have these carved beams um, up at the ceiling height. We have a very interesting chandelier. We have a huge, ornate window seat with gorgeous casement windows. I have no idea why this showed up on flooring. It's interesting that there's very little in this room other than the lamps that jump out at me and say 1930s. But it's a great image. This is a great room. This is a great picture. That would be a wonderful addition to a group of pictures showing what you can do with window seats because it seems to me that's the star of this show. Still, no idea why it would turn up in a search for flooring. This one. Yes, this is another Armstrong. I recognize that particular Armstrong floor. One of the designs they were pushing, it was sort of fake slate. And, of course, because it's fake slate, this sort of ashlar pattern, they're showing it off in the foyer of a little cottage-style house. Very interesting. I really love the image. It is 1930s. No two ways around that. But there's nothing going on here that specifically says 1930s to me. Because what they're putting together is a little... Uh, a vignette of the interior of a Tudor-style cottage. Who knows? This one, uh, this is very interesting. 1930s, this is from uh, a site that posted it, antiquehome.org. Don't know who they are, what they're dealing with, but this is a wonderful set of built-in bunk beds. Great image of a 1930s boys' room, notice this starburst image on the floor. We know they did that in the 1930s. So that is the first thing that jumps out and says 30s to me. This, boy, what a useful image this is, because we don't often see a lot of images of children's bedrooms. And when we do, nine times out of 10, those children are girls. Once again, we have Armstrong telling us what to do for a bright gay room. This is interesting. This is just a wonderfully decorative floor. But we have so much more than that going on here. It's a very coordinated room. That floor matches the draperies that are hanging from the window, matches the sofa. And because we've got sort of green and terracotta, you notice we've got plants, indoor plants, crawling up trellises. Strange, strange image. Uh, however, we have a fabulous little Art Deco table hiding in the corner. That's on the left-hand side of the image uh, where they're showing you into the corridor beyond great little table there, and the sofa is a nice example of deco furniture. Nevertheless, this is it, and this is one of the reasons I love flooring ads. Here we have another. Uh, this is fabulous, too. Again, as with the boys' room we saw two images ago, here we've got a girls' room. Very interesting to me, because I have never before seen beds uh, placed like this, with the two headboards together and a little table in between them to sort of create a bit of a nightstand. 
That's a new one on me. Nevertheless, this is very interesting. And if for no other reason than that alone, I would say the picture's worth hanging on to because they've provided a new and different way to position beds in a room shared by two children. But I love the way they are under the slanted roof on the side of the, the, uh, the bedroom. And I love the fact that they've thrown up a balance and some curtains to make this sort of a little nook area. I have to say, if I were going to throw together a file of creative ways to deal with shared bedrooms, you know, when you have a couple of girls and they're sharing a room, I would definitely throw this in that file. Now, this is yet another one of those small images, an image that is just, just bordering on on being large enough to use. There are a lot of things that are good about this image. For starters, even though it's very tiny, we are getting a lot of the detail. We are seeing the colors. And in this case, it's probably very useful in terms of colors. It is a flooring ad. You can tell from this very interesting inlaid linoleum flooring and once again, this is when they were trying to sell people on adding linoleum in elegant bedrooms. That's what this one is all about. It's, this is the very edge of what is large enough to use. A tiny bit smaller, and that would have to be a discard. Now, this is our final image and this is just a very interesting Art Deco bedroom. I can see why this would have come up on a flooring search, because that is a very interesting floor. There are definitely some highly peculiar things about this. For example, those two chairs at the foot of the bed that are crammed together. Not sure I understand what that's all about, in order to sit in those chairs, you have to move them apart. I don't know why anybody would have thought that was a good thing. Uh, we have night tables on either side of the bed, but they are recessed, making it next to impossible to turn out the light without getting out of bed to do it, in which case, what's the point? Odd picture. I would have to say this is one of those things that I could find a use for because it is so strange. It is so different. But yeah, just in terms of what we see in this image, oh, very, very peculiar. So that's what I have for you today. Images based on a very specific search, 1930s flooring advertisements. That's the search. And you can see what we've come up with. For my purposes, since I tend to collect images of home decor, different styles, different periods, different eras, a search like that can turn up some real gems. But as you can see, it's, it's also hit or miss. You get a lot of stuff that is unusable. You get a lot of great stuff and you wonder why. So I thought you might find that interesting. Uh, it's just a little window on how I can come up with the images that I end up sharing with you. All right, that's what I have for you today. We're going to take a look at a slideshow on the way out. For those of you who join us for the Just Chatting videos, we will be back at 8 o'clock this evening. And for the rest of you, we'll see you again next week. Have a terrific day.